Hey guys, it's Kevin. Welcome to another quick tutorial in Cinema 4D and also a little bit in Photoshop. Today we're going to be doing some mazes. I want to show you how to make a 3D maze in Cinema 4D very quickly and uh, they're really fun to do. And so I want to show you how to do that. Um, so what we're going to do is we actually have to start off in Photoshop. And so I'm in Photoshop. I've got this maze right here. You can find lots of mazes online. Um, that you can uh, just download and bring it into Photoshop. Um, there's some free ones you, that you can find, or there's some ones that you can pay for, like on stock websites. Or you can draw your own. If you want to get the line tool out and uh, you want to go ahead and like start drawing uh, your own mazes, you know, I think that would be pretty cool as well. I've done that before. It does take some time um, because you want to you know, you want to have all these little doorways and these little dead ends and stuff like that. So it does take a little bit of time to draw your own maze, but they are fun to do. But once you have your maze uh, completed, then we can go ahead and start rendering it into 3D. So what we want to do, let's just assume that you got one off of the internet. You didn't draw it on your own. You just downloaded a maze and this is what you've got. It's a black maze on a white background. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to select that um, black part off of the white. So I just use the magic wand tool and uh, I just zoom in and then I just click anywhere on this uh, black maze. Make sure your contiguous um, check mark is unchecked. And then when you click that, all of the black will be selected. You just want to copy that, control C on your keyboard and then control V on your keyboard to paste it. And now you have the black maze on its own layer and it's transparent in the background. So that's what you want. Once you have that, uh, then it's pretty easy from here on. All right, so what you want to do is you want to uh, control click your maze layer with the transparent background. So control click. Just like that. Now you have all these marching ants all over the place. You have a good selection. You want to go to your path menu here. Um, if you don't have it um, visible, just go to window and click on paths. And it should be right there. Now, once you're on your path window, what you want to do is go down to this little uh, button right here, which is make work path from selection. Just click it once. And now you have a work path that um, is in the same shape as your maze. Once you're at this point and your, your path is selected, you want to go to File and you want to go to Export and you want to export path to Illustrator. Now, I don't have Illustrator. I don't use Adobe Illustrator. I only use Photoshop. And uh, if you don't have Illustrator, that's perfectly fine. We're never even going to use it. But just do path to Illustrator. Click that. And make sure it's a work path. Click OK. And then you're going to need to be able to save it somewhere. So we'll just call it Maze Path. Um, make sure it's in the AI um, type. And then click Save. And that's all you got to do. And then we're done with Photoshop. Now, you go to Cinema 4D. And what we want to do is we want to bring um, that AI file that we just created, we want to bring it in. So go to um, New Project or um, Open Project, rather. Click on that Maze Path that you just created in Photoshop. Open that. Uh, and then it's going to give you an option here on your scale. Um, it just depends on what you're trying to do here. One uh, being the the normal ratio that you created it in, or if you want to make it bigger, is you know as far as the size of it. Um, I usually do ten, and so I think ten is fine. But that's up to you what you want to do. Click OK, and there is your maze. Your maze has now been imported into Cinema 4D as a spline. So if you click up here, you see that you have two paths over here because these two paths don't touch each other. So you have two paths, um, but they're all in one group. So one path is, is there together. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and combine all of these elements. So just select all of those, right click it, connect objects plus delete. Now you have it all in one spline. This is one spline together. Another thing I want to go ahead and do is I just want to go ahead and rotate this thing and put it down on the ground. So I'm going to rotate it, uh, drag this red, Axis, hold my shift key down so I get to 90 degrees, and now I have it actually on the ground. Now that we're on the ground, what we want to do is we want to select the um, the polygons on the, uh, the top here. So just make sure your polygons are selected, and then Control A. Oops. Oh, we have to do C first. There we go. Why are you not selecting? Oh, we didn't put it into a loft. That's why. 
Sorry, I was skipping a step. We got to put it into a loft to get polygons here. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, while your maze, pala ma maze path is there, go ahead and click on your um, loft right here. Drag your maze path into your loft. I don't know why I forgot that step. Um, put maze path into the loft and now you have polygons. So now we have polygons that we can play with, which is good. All right, so put both of those together. And then again, right click, connect objects and delete. And now we have our maze with polygons. That's what we want. Now on polygon mode, control A, we'll select all of these polygons. And then what you want to do is you want to drag these polygons up to give them height. So make sure you're on your Y axis here, hold the control key, and then just drag up until you are at your desired height. And uh, that's gonna be up to you. If you want it to be a really, really tall maze, or you know about the same height as the walls you know that's up to you i'm going to do it about right there uh, but you can decide how tall you want it to go so there is our 3d maze that we've created now when we render it let's just do a quick render there you go there's our render one thing that i do not like are these super sharp edges. You can see how that just goes polygon, polygon, and there's a side, and there's no like edging right there. Well, that's not how real walls work. So we want to add a little bit of a bevel to that. That's pretty simple to do. I'm gonna go to my line mode over here, or edge mode, and uh, I'm going to um, control A to select all of the edges. So every edge has been selected. It's got an orange line on it. And then I'm going to uh, right click and do bevel. And then I'm going to drag over to the right. Now, um, when I do that, actually before I drag over to the right, um, uh, what I want to do is I want to go to my offset over here because I don't want 10 centimeters, that's gonna to be too much. Let's do about two centimeters, but let's also make our subdivisions at about four. And now what happens when I drag over to the right, you can see it's starting to add little edges on, onto the, um, you know, where the wall meets the ceiling type thing. You can see where they're, you're adding some edges here. So I wouldn't overdo it. I would just add a little bit of an edge there. I think four subdivisions is fine. You may do less, but four is good. And that just gives it a little bit of edge here just to make it uh, reflect the light when you start to add some lights to it. Um, sometimes you do have problems though. Like if I were to um, add the bevel here and I just keep dragging and dragging and dragging, then you're gonna start get some really bad problems here. So I would not do it a lot. I would just start dragging until it gets just, just enough so we have a little bit of edge there. Now when we render it, you can see that there's an edge on this um, the walls here, and that's just going to make it look a little bit more realistic. All right, one more thing I want to show you, and then uh, that's, that's pretty much all you do to make a maze. You can add your own textures and stuff like that. Uh, but one thing I want to show you is um, if you were... Um, for example, if you were wanting to create a picture of a maze and uh, put like a little person right here walking into the maze, um, you notice that the maze is pretty small. You know, you just walk in the maze and then you go out the back and, and that's it. That's a pretty small maze. If you want to make it look like it goes on forever and ever and ever, there's a pretty easy way to do that as well. Uh, so what you want to do is, uh, let's just zoom out so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, you want to uh, put your loft into a... Um, a cloner here. So what you want to do is a uh, MoGraph cloner, put your loft into the cloner. And what it's going to do by default, it's going to uh, make them go up. Uh, we don't want that. We don't want them to go on the Y axis. That looks kind of weird. Um, instead, um, let's change that uh, Y axis to zero. Instead, we want them to go back. So let's change your Z axis. And I don't know what it's going to be. It depends on what size your maze is. But change your Z axis to, you know, something like that. In this case, it's 367 centimeters. Yours might be different. But what that's doing is it's cloning this maze back and back and back. And uh, you can see how it's going on and on and on. Um, and instead of three counts, we could do more. We could do like 10 counts. And now it just, that's probably way too much. But it goes on and on and on. And then um, when you uh, zoom in right here, so when you start to create your image, you can see that this maze goes on forever. So maybe that's the type of image you want to create. If you want them to go out and to the left and to the right, um, you can go to cloner instead of uh, linear, just do grid array. Um, and then we'll just do, let's see, one by one by one does that, but we want to add some in the back like that. But let's make sure we add our Oh, we wanted to go left and right. 
Okay, so we want to add them to the left and to the right. There we go, just like that. So in this case, again, it's like 367. And so now you have them going left and right. And then what you want to do is put your cloner inside a cloner like that. So we have a cloner in a cloner. And then you want to go back to your Z axis at 367. Now we're going back further and further. And that is a big maze. That is a really big maze. Um, of course, it is going to start repeating. These walls and these these dead ends are going to repeat, but that's okay because you're not going to be able to you know discern that um, from this vantage point. Um, so that looks good right there. And uh, if you were to render it with uh, no you know no light settings, no textures, uh, that's what you would come up with. And then you can put a little person in there, and they can be going off into the maze. And uh, that's how you do that. So just in, what, 10 minutes, we've made a maze uh, using Photoshop and Cinema 4D. Um, but make your own mazes and uh, have fun with it and uh, see what you can create. But that's all I've got for this one. I'll show you some of the samples that I've created uh, doing this. And I uh, hope that you're inspired to create your own images and share them with me. I would love to see them. But until the next video, guys, have fun creating, and I'll talk to you again very soon.